Okay, let's get started with our little sailor dress. Um, just talk to you for a minute about the fabric I'm using. This is called a shirt weight cotton. It's a poly cotton blend. It's very lightweight. Um, a lot of times it's used for shirting. Um, so it has a very nice feel to it and a very nice drape. You're going to cut the back. You're going to cut the front bodice on the fold. You're going to set those aside. I wanted to tell you about the skirt um, pattern. I only gave you one piece, but you cut the front on the fold, cut two pieces for the back because we're going to want to have a seam going down the back. And instead of making you tape all those pattern, pe pattern pieces together, just the same piece for the front and the back. And then there's a little piece that's a hem a piece for the hem that we're going to fold up and it's the same. You cut one on the fold and one just two pieces. This hem part to be exactly the same size as the bottom of your skirt. You cut out your sleeve, your sleeve band, <clears throat> you cut out your tie piece and then you cut out the little sailor collar. Okay, the first thing I did, you had to cut out four pieces for your sailor collar. Um, I went ahead and I used a very lightweight, I don't know if you can see it there, a lightweight interfacing because this collar is also a very lightweight fabric and I wanted the collar to have a lot of body to it. So pick a very lightweight interfacing for the inside of your collar. Okay, so for our collar and this interfacing, I trim the interfacing back so that it's not um, in the seam. So my interfacing is trimmed back before I ironed it on. And then I started sewing, I put my right sides together and I started sewing here. I sewed all the way off the edge here, turned it, sewed all the way off the edge here. Then I turned it and sewed all the way up and around this curve. Be sure to back tack here and here and so now you can see where this little square of fabric is right there we're going to clip that off and we're going to clip off this edge too because when I turn this right side out I want to have very sharp corners so now I'm going to take and I'm going to turn this right side out I'm going to push out those little corners I might use a chopstick or something to help me poke those out and then I'm going to press it. Okay, so I've turned them right side out and I've pressed them and there's a little teeny dog ear that comes out the top here and I've clipped that off so that it's nice and straight. <clears throat> so the neck comes around just like that. Okay, so here is our collar. Now the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to do a 3 8 inch seam just a top stitch right around here and back up. So here they are with the top stitch done. So part of the reason that I use that top stitch is that's how we're going to measure to put our ribbon on. Um, we're going to put our ribbon so that um, we're going to come up above here so that we are sure it's not short and then we're just going to lay this edge of the ribbon just so it barely covers that top stitch. We're going to come down and we're going to sew down on one side and when we get to this little corner down here you're just going to, while you have it in your machine with your needle down, you're going to take it and just make a 45 degree angle and then go across. You're going to do another angle and then go up and around and let me show you what it looks like. Okay, so here's what it looks like, and you can see I've only sewn right along the very outside edge of this all the way around. And when you get to this little curvy part, um, anytime that you're sewing something that's on a curve, um, this outside edge is going to be bigger um, than the curve that you have. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this over to my iron and I'm going to just slowly work that in so that I can get it nice and flat and then I'll top stitch on the other side. Okay, so here's what it looks like after it's all been stitched down. <clears throat> now I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to trim off that little bit that I have hanging over the edges so that I'm sure that it can clear up over the edge. 
I thought I would show you how I did these corners. Um, I know I told you, but I wanted to show you. But the other thing I wanted to remind you is, this is the center back of your dress right here. This is where the zipper is going to go down, right in between these two collars. And so when you put your second um, ribbon on, you have to be sure that you have the center back together. You, you don't want to do it so that the ribbon's like that on both sides. It needs to be one facing one way and one facing the other. I'm going to cover that little top stitch just with the very edge of my ribbon. I'm going to come down sewing very close to the edge of that ribbon. When I get just a little ways from the corner, okay, you're going to take your ribbon and you're just going to fold it so that it makes a 45 degree angle. You should be able to have a point here and then a V here and it should line up pretty well. So you just work it until you're just covering the um, top stitching at the bottom so that you know you're going around the corner. Okay, and you come down to that corner, put your needle in, pivot, and just continue on. All right, our next step is we're going to take our bodice front and our bodice backs and we're going to sew the shoulder seams. Mm. Okay, so our shoulder seams are sewn and I finished the edges. I did this one with a serger, but you could finish it with an overcast edge. And I have a little video to show you that. If you would like to see it, I'll link to it. So now we're doing the sleeve. The first thing we're going to do is be sure that we cut the little notches that are on our pattern that show us where we're going to gather. We're going to gather between the notches and I want to put a pin right in the center of the sleeve. So I folded it in half, found the center, put a pin in, and I put it far enough down that I can work around it. Gathering stitch in, and then you're going to gather that up by pulling your um, bobbin thread. Okay, and you're going to gather it up until it matches this armhole here in your sleeve, and you'll put it right sides together. So let me get that started, and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so here is what my sleeve looks like right now. This is the center pin and it's right there at the shoulder seam, okay? And I've evenly distributed those little gathers all the way around and then down here before the notch, it should match the curve of the um, bodice and I've pinned it all into place so I know it's gonna fit. Now I'm gonna take it over and I'm gonna sew in the sleeve. Okay, I've started sewing along and I've already started on the little part there that's nice and flat, but I've worked my way up to where the ruffles start, the gathers. So line up your raw edges, making sure there's no turn unders in your gathers. And then when you get it lined up, put your finger there and give it a little tug. And that way you get your gathers nice and straight and not um, looped together and bunchy okay so you can do that give it a little tug and then slowly I'm going to sew right over those gathers taking out my pins as I go along all right and I'm going to follow the same method all the way around so I'm going to make sure that um, none of it is flipped under here that they're nice and straight and even all right, if you have a little um, screwdriver for your sewing machine or just anything that can help you just pull those around, it's kind of helpful. So anyway, finish going all the way to the other end. I just wanted to show you, I made it all the way to the end. And when you're setting a sleeve in like this, it's important that um, your side seam, which is here, and your sleeve, that they line up both up at the beginning and the end. So now I'm going to turn this right side out and check and see if I like the way my gathers look. So this is how my gathers look for my little sleeve, and I'm very happy with how it turned out. See, it's nice and no gathers here at the beginning, then where that starts. The biggest bulk of the gathers are right here in the center, 
and then it goes back down. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to um, trim this seam down and overcast it, or I'm going to run it through a serger. I have both of my sleeves set in right now. So now <clears throat> there was another little clip mark on the bottom of the sleeve um, here and here. Okay, so now I'm going to run a gathering stitch between those two clip marks and make the bottom of my sleeve match the width of the armband. Okay, before I attach my armband, I did a little cheat. Okay, I folded it in half and pressed it. And then on one side, I took and I turned down 3 eighths of an inch and pressed that. Okay, so I have one side that's bigger and one side with the turned in press. Okay. So now I have it pinned to my armband, and the way that you did it, this is the inside of the sleeve, <clears throat> and so um, the side that would be considered the right side, I pinned to the wrong side of the sleeve, okay? So that little bit that we folded up is just here waiting, okay? So now I'm going to push this out of the way. I don't want to get any sewing done on that now. I'm going to put this in my sewing machine and I'm going to sew right across that armband making sure that my ruffles are nice and neat like I did before. Okay, here I have sewn the sleeve on to the little armband and the little armband is going to come up and flip over like this and then I'm going to be able to take this little piece here and match it up to that that. Um, little seam that we sewed right there and it should just cover it and you're going to top stitch it all the way across but before I do that <clears throat> I want to trim this seam here after I've checked to make sure it looks exactly how I want it to look I'm going to push everything out of the way and very carefully trim it down to about a quarter inch all the way across so that when um, I'm sewing that little armband on you have the, um, it'll be double, double thickness of your white fabric right there. Okay, so that it hides the, um, the print of your dress. So if you don't, you can see through it. So that will help hide that. Um, it's not as an important a step if you're not using white or a, a dark color. So anyway, let's get that done. Okay, so here's what our, our little sleeve band should look like now. You can see that I top stitched it down right across the top edge there. Okay, your bodice should look something like this now. You should have two puffy little sleeves and it should look really great. Now, I wanted to talk about these little armbands for just a second. Um, I finished that seam on the inside here, but I was very careful to do a lot of back stitching right here at the beginning because you're going to have a lot of pulling on that little part of the armband as you take it on and off. This armband is a comfortable size for your average child. If you have a baby that's um, got extra little baby goodness, you may want to go up um, a size or two um, in the little armband because th this has no stretch to it at all. Um, so just go up on the size chart of the armband only just a little bit um, because these can be a little bit big on a baby and it's still completely adorable but if it's too small um, it's a real problem. So that's that's that. So we're ready for the next step. Okay, we're getting ready to work on the skirt of the dress. Now, remember, we had one that was cut on the fold, okay, and then one that was just cut two pieces. We're going to take our two pieces and we're going to attach it to each side of the one with the fold. So basically, we're making our side seams and our center back we will leave open. So let me run those seams and show you what it looks like. Okay, so here we are. I finished the seam on the back of my bodice. I did the edge work on the back of the bodice. I finished the seam on the center back of my skirt, and I sewed the side seams in the skirt, and I finished those so they're nice and neat. 
Now the last thing I did is I marked the center front of the skirt with a pin and I put it down nice and low so I can run my gathering stitch over the top of that pin and it won't be in the way. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to start at one side and I'm going to run a gathering stitch all the way across the top of the skirt. So let me do that and show you what we're going to do next. Okay, I wanted to give you just one little tip for a professional finish on your um, work. You see this side seam here? I pressed it so that it went this way, and it doesn't really matter which way you press it, but when I get ready to attach the hem piece that's down here, I want the side seam to be going the same way. So what I mean is, when I sew this on, it's going to be going this way. When I sew the hem on, it's going to be going this way. If I sewed it on with the hem, and it's going this way, then I have that, that kind of funky little, it won't lay flat seam on the side. So always be sure that your seams go the same way. Okay, so here is my next step. I matched the center back so that the edges go right next to each other and I pinned it. Then I went over and I matched the side seam with the side seam of the bodice. I pinned the center front of the skirt, because remember we had that pin there telling me where that was, and the center front of the bodice. I matched the side seams on the other side, and I matched the back on the other side. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my gathering, gathering stitches and make the skirt fit the bodice. Now, remember, you can pull your gathering stitches from this side by pulling the string and you can pull it from the other side by pulling the string. So I'm just going to work my way towards the middle. That way you're not trying to pull all that fabric from one side. So let me pull it up and pin it and I'll show you what we have. Okay, so you can see that I have matched up the center back, the side, the center front, and the other side and pinned my gathers into place. And so by doing it in quarters like that, you know that you have an even amount of gathers in each little section. So you don't have a ton of gathers here and then by the time you reach the other end, you're out. The other thing is that you need to keep track of when you're putting your um, gathers on, we need to have approximately an inch right here in the very back with no gathers. So here's an inch here and then my gathers start and that's for the zipper that we're going to put in. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my time and like before we're going to adjust these gathers so they're nice and even. I'm going to hold it and I'm going to give it a little tug before I sew over it so that they lie nice and flat and I'm going to attach the skirt to the bodice. Okay, my skirt is attached and I've checked all the ruffles and they look really good, all the gathers. All right, I wanted to point out that on this little seam right here, I backstitched at both sides so that that stays nice and secure. Before I do anything else, I'm either going to trim this down and zigzag over the edge or finish that edge with a serger. Okay, so here's my seam finished and I took it over and I gave it just a, a little bit of a press to press that seam up this way. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come onto the right side making sure that that seam is pressed up this way. I'm going to top stitch at about between an eighth and a quarter of an inch all the way across the front of the bodice. So I'm keeping that seam pressed up and that helps the skirt to lie really flat. Okay, so you can see that little top stitch right there, and it doesn't really matter how how wide you make that top stitch, but it's important that you keep it consistent all the way around. Okay, we're getting ready to put the zipper in the back of our dress. We're going to line up the center back seam right sides together, all right, and we're going to put a pin two inches down from where the bodice stops and the skirt starts. Okay, so about right there. You can use a ruler and measure that. <clears throat> so two inches is right there, all right? And then there's the rest of the skirt going down. When I sew this seam, and I promise you this is the easiest way to put a zipper in ever, 
We're going to sew using our basting stitch. So the longest stitch on our sewing machine. We're gonna start here at the top sewing a half inch seam all the way down until we get to this pin. Once I get to this pin, I'm gonna change the, um, <clears throat> the length of my stitch to my normal stitch length that I like to sew my seams at. So from that pin down, it's gonna be a shorter stitch length. Okay, so here is the back of my dress, and I sewed using that really long stitch length. I did back tack, even with that long stitch length, just once right here at the top, so that that top stays together as we work on it. But then it's just that really long stitch length all the way down to the zipper. Then from there down, I sewed with a regular stitch length. All right, I took my pin out. I opened the seam up and put it right back where it was, but then I pressed the seam open flat. So you can see that it's nice and flat, half inch seam all the way down the back. All right, so now we're working with our zipper. And you'll notice at the bottom of your zipper is this little metal piece. That's what holds it together. Here's that pin where we um, changed you know, our stitch length. I'm gonna take that little metal piece and I'm gonna fit it right below that pin and then I'm gonna run my zipper up like that. And you'll notice that this little zipper part comes up here above the top. Depending on the length of your zipper, you could have more zipper up here. That doesn't matter. We just want to have this little metal piece below our pin and we want this to come up off the top. The next thing you're going to want is just an Elmer's glue stick or, you know, you can go to your kid's room and get one out of their toy box or wherever their craft supplies. This washes out, so it's really not a big deal. This is what we do in quilting, is we use these uh, glue sticks a lot of times. And I'm just going to put a little bit coming up the back of the dress, like so, just like that. All right, I'm going to reposition my zipper with the zipper slide side down. I'm going to put that little metal piece below my pin, and I'm going to center that zipper all the way up that seam and press it into the glue. Just like, like that. And you want that center of the zipper to go right down the center of your center back seam. All right, I'm gonna press it in. So now I'm gonna take some time and I'm gonna pin it. I wanna put my pins on the right side, so I'm gonna have to be working a little bit like this. All right, and you can feel, you know, that zipper is right there. So there's that center seam and there, you can just feel it's on both sides like that. So I'm going to just take some time and pin it into place, putting pins on the right side, feeling, making sure that that zipper is right there in the center of that seam. All right, um, before we get started um, sewing it, you have to put your zipper foot on. Now, zipper foots on different machines look different. This particular one has a really nice little guide right here, and it's going to give me a quarter inch between there and the needle, which is what I want. Some don't have a little guide over here. So you're gonna have to look at what you have, but you do need a foot um, to put your zipper, zipper in with. Okay, so here's the back of my dress with it all pinned into place. I moved that pin that was marking where that little metal piece was, and the metal piece is right here. You can feel it through the dress. You do not want to sew on the metal piece. That would cause big problems. So I moved it to just like an eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch below that metal thing. There's that pin that marks where I'm going to sew across. Because if you sew across under the metal piece, you're just down here into this little flappy tab of the zipper. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, I have put the front part of the dress up here out of the way. My sleeves are out of the way. Everything is just, just the zipper and the back of the dress. 
are right there. So I'm going to start sewing down. Here is that center seam that we sewed, you know, using the big stitches, and it's right on top of the zipper, zipper teeth. So I'm just going to slowly work my way down, removing my pins as I go. Just sewing as straight as I can. And this might take you a couple minutes. When you're putting your pins in, it's good to remember um, to keep the other side pulled back enough that they're not in the way as you sew down. Alright, getting close. Okay, so that little metal piece is right, right there. I can feel it. I'm going to get down to where I can pivot below that. Pull out that last pin. Turn my dress. And so that metal piece is right, right there. And I like to do just a double stitch down here at the bottom. All right, then you pivot again, and you're going to come right back up the other side of your zipper. So now I'm just going to sew all the way to the top like we did when we came down this side. Okay, you can see that the zipper is sewn in, and that was pretty easy. So now all we need to do is to take our seam ripper and just um, very carefully um, pick up get it so you can see it. Pick up those little stitches. Remember we sewed with that big long stitch so there's not very many. So you just get it started and you pull out all those little stitches with your seam ripper all the way down the back of your dress. Being careful not to cut your dress. You just work it all the way down to the bottom. Okay, so I'm working it down to the bottom. Okay, so here it is, all sliced open. So now spend some time pulling out all those little pieces of string, pieces of thread, to make sure that it's nice and neat and your zipper is installed. Okay, so here's my zipper. It's completely installed, it works great, it looks good. I'm sure you did a great job. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take it over to our machine. Let me show you. Okay, we're over at our machine, and you can see that the, um, the zipper teeth are right here. And this is why I like to use the polyester instead of a metal. I am going to sew back and forth. It's called a bar tack. It's about an eighth of an inch from the top of the dress, just like that. And I'm do that on both sides. Okay, so you can see that I've sewn across the top of the dress and over the zipper, back and forth on both sides. Now, I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to chop off the top part of that zipper. Okay. It should hold your zipper down, but we're not going to test it. That's just in case you forget, because if you were to not do this and unzip your zipper all the way, you'd have to take your zipper out and start over because you can't put this back on. So that's what we're going to do, and then we will finish this area when we put the collar on. Okay, our next thing we're going to work on is the hem of the dress. This is one of my favorite ways to hem a little dress because it gives it a nice finish and a lot of body at the bottom. So remember we had one cut on the fold and we had one cut just like we did for our skirt. So we're going to sew it together making side seams and a back seam 
And when we sew the back seam, remember we sewed a half an inch seam down the center back of our dress. So sew a half an inch seam when you connect the back seam to your facing, to your hem. So here's our hem. This was our center back with a half inch seam. We have two side seams with our 3 8 inch seam. So now I'm going to take this over to my iron and I'm going to fold it in half with the right sides out. You can see that I've pressed my hems, all right? The one thing that I did is this is the center front and I put a pin. So now I'm going to take my dress and I'm going to match right sides together, matching my center back the center front and pin it all into place all the way around the bottom of the skirt. Okay, you can see that it's all pinned around the bottom of the skirt and if you did your seams consistent, you cut it out consistent, it should fit really well. Um, so now I'm going to sew it on using a 3 8 inch seam all the way around. Okay, so I finished sewing it on and I pressed the seam up like we did up here on the bodice. I pressed that up. So now I'm going to come to the right side and I'm going to top stitch it down. Okay, so here is our dress so far. So now, um, this is where you get to be very creative. Um, I'm making this a little red, white, and blue sailor dress, but if you were using, um, let's say, a pink fabric, with pink trim, you know, let your heart be your guide on that. But I'm gonna do three rows of ribbon at the bottom in red, white, and blue. So um, you decide what colors you want, how many ribbons you want. Um, that's, that's all your design choice. But I'm gonna show you how to do it. Okay, I'm gonna start out with my navy blue stripe and I wanted it an inch away from the hem here. This little box of needles is an inch, so that's what I'm gonna use as my guide. I'm gonna set it right on the hem. I'm gonna put my ribbon right up next to it, and I'm gonna sew right along the outside edge, because I'm gonna do two rows of stitches, one on each side of the ribbon so that it stays nice and flat. So I'm just gonna keep working my way around like this. Now if you were more comfortable and you wanted to pin it into place, that's just fine. But I'm just going to take my time and work my way around. Okay, I've worked my way all the way around and I'm just about back to where I started. All right, and I have cut the ribbon just long enough that I can turn it back on itself underneath to have a nice little folded finished edge right there. Okay, so now that's, that's done. I'm going to go back around this time at the top of the ribbon all the way around. Okay, now I'm doing the white ribbon and I'm doing the same measurement, the one inch away. Now, I want you to keep in mind that this dress is the next to the largest size um, in the pattern. So if you're making the smallest size, you may only want just one row of ribbon around, but that's entirely up to you and for your design. Okay, so I've attached the blue and the white. So now I'm gonna attach this little red ribbon going right down the center, and I'm just gonna eyeball it. But this is a very, very narrow piece of ribbon. And um, if I were making a really small size, this might be the size I would use instead of using the big one if I was gonna use more than one row. Now, I'm using a zigzag stitch to put this on that stays Within the size of the ribbon, I'm not going off the ribbon with the zigzag, but if you just do one little stitch down the center of this, when you wash it, it might curl up. So by using that wide zigzag, just as wide as the ribbon, it'll help it lay flat. Okay, how exciting is this? Here's our dress so far, looking so cute. So now we're gonna work on the collar. Okay, we're getting ready to pin on the collar. So I've marked the center front of my little bodice with a pin so that I know that's the center and I've put the one side so that the tip of the collar goes right on the pin. 
And on the other side, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to mark it or pin it right there. I'm at a bad angle here. Hold on. Let me get it around. Okay, so I'm going to pin it so that the tip of the collar goes right to the center. All right, and then I'm just going to pin it the west, the rest of the way around. All right, and then in the back, the collar, you leave a little, it should have a little bit of space so that the zipper misses um, getting caught in the collar. All right, and just so that I know that I have it good, I pinned it so that this is straight and I put a pin down here to hold it as I put the collar on because when you're done you want the back to lay down flat like that and the front to be like that. So I'm going to sew this on using a quarter inch seam just so that I know that it's in a good place. Okay, so you can see the collar is all tacked down. It still looks really good. I've left the pin back here to keep it so that it's going to go on nice and, and straight. So now what I'm going to do is take, you can use single fold bias tape, which you can purchase, or you can cut just a one inch strip of your fabric from the width of the fabric. It doesn't have to be bias. And on the front side, we're going to um, line up, we're going to fold this back like that. We're going to line up the fold right on the zipper right there. Okay. And then I'm going to just carefully match all my raw edges and I'm going to sew around the top of the neck. All right. And I'm going to be using my 3 8 inch seam. Okay, so here I am sewing around and now I'm really taking my time. I'm doing this nice and slow. I'm making sure that the collar and the dress are nice and flat under my presser foot. If it gets a little bump and wrinkle and bulky over here, that's okay. As long as I'm staying right, matching all of my raw edges and keeping it nice and flat under my presser foot. When I make an adjustment, my needle is down so that it doesn't move around on me. And I'm making sure to keep everything smooth and lined up. Just a few stitches at a time. And as I work my way around that curve, I'm not in a race. Okay, see how it's all bunchy over here? But it's really flat under my presser foot. So anyway, just keep working it the exact same way all the way to the other side. Okay, I'm getting back to the other side, and as I'm working this curve that's right there, do a couple stitches, and then realign everything up so it's going through here nice and straight, just like that. And then I'm going to cut this off, not too short. <clears throat> And I want to make sure that I can fold it back so that the fold is right at the zipper. And I didn't tell you, but at the other side, I did a back tack really good right at that zipper. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to top stitch our little facing that we did. All right, so here is. I'm going to trim up all of these seams. All right, I'm going to trim this seam down here, this around the neck to a quarter of an inch. Okay, so here's that little seam that I trimmed up, and I, I left it a generous quarter of an inch. All right, now I'm going to take this little facing and I'm going to put it like this, and I'm going to top stitch just through the facing and that seam at about an eighth of an inch all the way around the neck. Okay, I took my time and I top stitched right along that edge and just catching just this raw edge with the facing. And what that does is when I turn this to make that nice edge for our, um, our collar, it helps keep everything nice and neat as we turn it in. 
Okay, so that's what that's for. So now we're going to start by folding this facing down so that the facing end edge is right to the seams that we just sewed and then I'm going to turn it in to the inside of the neck. And we should have that really nice edge right here along the outside of the collar. So let me do that and show you how to sew it. All right, so I've unpinned the collar. Remember we had it pinned down there so it kept it nice and straight. Unpinned it so that it's coming out this way. I have trimmed back all the bulk I can at this little corner right here. I've trimmed the edge. It's trimmed very close, but not into the stitching. <clears throat> so I'm going to fold this up. Then I'm going to fold it down so that that edge looks really good right there. And this is all lined up. And then I'm going to back tack when I start right here at the edge because I need to keep that zipper from coming up and off. So right there I'm going to back tack and I'll show you what this looks like. Okay, I have it all folded right there at the zipper. I've got just a little bit worked ahead right here. Do you see how nice and flat this is coming out and how that is just flat right there? Okay, so I'm going to stitch, back tack going off the zipper, back forward, keeping it on the facing. Okay, so now that's done. So now I'm just going to work this by folding this back to where my stitches are, folding it down, keeping it flat, and sewing right along that outside fold. All right, let's do it again. So here we're coming around the neck. I'm folding it, making sure this is nice and flat everywhere, and stitch. It's really important that you keep the collar out of the way, that it's nice and smooth right there. <clears throat> See, it gets really bunchy over here. We don't care about that. <clears throat> we just want it nice and smooth. So anyway, I'm going to work all the way around <clears throat> and I'm going to finish the other side where the zipper is just the way we did when we started. Okay, so here's the back. Now, the one tip is you want your facing to end up being the same size um, when you get back to where the zipper is so that you have the same amount sticking up. You have a nice even top here. So there is the back of our dress. Here is the front of our dress. All right, so it has a nice little facing. I went over and I pressed it. I found the side seam or the shoulder seams here. I pressed this down like that. So the only thing we have left to do now is the tie. Okay, <clears throat> I started out with a two and a half inch wide piece of fabric cut from the width of the fabric. <clears throat> then I cut it in half. I folded it in half wrong, um, <clears throat> right sides together. I stitched down a quarter inch seam and down here at the bottom I sewed a 45 degree angle. So you can see I went from the corner there and up. So this is a two and a half inch piece of fabric folded in half, sewn down the side with a 45 degree angle at the bottom and I'm going to trim that up like that. So now I'm going to turn it right side out. <clears throat> okay, to do that you use something like a chopstick, all right, and you wiggle this out and you push it inside of itself. Just gently start working it so that you're pushing that corner up into the tube. Okay, and once you get it started, it goes pretty quick. Sometimes it helps if you lick your fingers to get you a little more grip. All right, <clears throat> and there it goes. It's turned right side out. All right, so now I'm gonna take a little bit of time and I'm gonna work on turning this point out because I want a sharp point on the end. 
All right, I'm gonna make sure that that tip comes out so that it's nice and sharp and that it's nice and, sh and flat and sharp here. And then I'm gonna take it over and press it. Here are my two ties, my nice sharp points. They're very, very long and I'll show you why in just a minute. <clears throat> you can decide if you wanted to do a bow that would go here in the front of your dress or a knot. I'm going to do a knot. So you need to decide how far down you want um, the ties to hang when you're done. And for me, I'm just going to tie a knot. Okay, so I have my points facing each other that way. I've decided I want it to be about that long. So I'm going to take it, I'm going to wrap it up around my finger, pull it down through like this. Okay, nice little sailor knot, and it's about right there. So then I'm going to take and I'm going to measure <clears throat> from about the shoulder. Okay, so I want it to be about up here to the shoulder long, and I'm going to cut it. I cut it just a little extra because I need to finish this edge. All right, and then I'm going to take and hand sew it right at the shoulder so that this collar comes down over it like so. Now if you were going to do a bow you would do the same thing. Now what I personally am going to do I've never met a red cotton that didn't bleed when you washed it and I don't want it bleeding on the collar or on the dress. When I attach this one I'm going to use a snap because I have the little vinyl snaps. So I'm going to attach it with a snap right there. Um, so if you're not using red or you can attach it however you want right there, but I want to be able to take it off when I wash it so this doesn't bleed on my dress. So here it is with the snap right up here at the shoulder and that doesn't even show when you put the collar down. So there's our finished little dress. And so I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial. And until next time, this is Cindy with Vintage to New.